Today we're going to begin reading Fish in a Tree. Before we start reading though, I want you to take a look at the cover. Now, I know that fish don't live in trees, so I'm wondering what this book is really all about. So I want you to take just a few minutes, pause the recording, and look closely at the cover. I want you to predict what the story might be about based off the title, the images you see on the cover, and the colors that they used. Write for about two minutes and then turn the recording back on. Now last week when we were studying blurbs from books, one of the blurbs we read was the blurb for Fish in a Tree. As I reread this blurb to you, I want you to think what ideas do you have about the main character? What's going to be a major challenge for this character? Here's the blurb. Allie has been smart enough to fool a lot of smart people. Every time she lands in a new school, she's able to hide her inability to read by creating clever yet disruptive distractions. She's afraid to ask for help. After all, how can you cure dumb? However, Allie's newest teacher sees the bright, creative kid beneath the troublemaker and helps to shine a light on her gifts. As her confidence grows, Allie feels free to be herself and gets to know other kids who break the mold. When the outsiders start to fit in, surprising things begin to happen in Allie's classroom that show her there's a lot more to her and to everyone than a label. Okay, so in your journal, I want you to stop and jot your thoughts. What ideas do you have about the main character, Allie? And what do you think is going to be a major challenge for this character? When you're finished jotting, go ahead and turn the recording back on. Chapter one is titled, In Trouble Again. It's always there, like the ground underneath my feet. Well, Allie, are you going to write or aren't you? Mrs. Hall asks. If my teacher would mean, if my teacher were mean, it would be easier. Come on, she says. I know you can do it. What if I told you I was going to climb a tree using only my teeth? Would you say I could do it then? Oliver laughs, throwing himself on his desk like it's a fumbled football. Shay groans. Allie, why can't you just act normal for once? Near her, Albert, a bulky kid who's worn the same thing every day, a dark t-shirt that reads Flint, sits up straight like he's waiting for firecrackers to go off. Mrs. Hall sighs. Come on now, I'm only asking for one page describing yourself. I can't think of anything worse than having to describe myself. I'd rather write about something more positive, like throwing up at your own birthday party. It's important, she says. It's so your new teacher can get to know you. I know that, and it's exactly why I don't want to do it. Teachers are like the machines that take quarters for bouncy balls. You know what you're going to get, yet you don't know, too. And, she says, all that doodling of yours, Aunt Allie, if you weren't drawing all the time, your work might be done. Please put it away. Embarrassed, I slide my drawings underneath my blank writing assignment. I've been drawing pictures of myself being shot out of a cannon. It would be easier than school. Less painful. Come on, she says, moving my lined paper toward me. Just do your best. I'm going to stop here for just a second. I want you to think so far about Allie, the main character. 
Think about what have we learned so far about Allie? And also think for a second, where does this story take place? And how do we know that? Seven schools in seven years, and they're all the same. Whenever I do my best, they tell me I don't try hard enough. Too messy, careless spelling, annoyed that the same word is spelled different ways on the same page, and the headaches. I always get headaches for looking at the brightness of dark letters on white pages for too long. Mrs. Hall clears her throat. The rest of the class is getting tired of me again. Chairs slide, loud sighs. Maybe they, maybe they think I can't hear their words. Freak, dumb, loser. I wish she'd just go hang by Albert, the walking Google page who'd get a better grade than me if he just blew his nose onto his paper. The back of my neck heats up. I don't get it. She always lets me slide. It must be because these are for the new teacher, and she can't have one missing. I stare at her big stomach. So, did you decide what you're going to name the baby? I ask. Last week we got her talking about baby names for a full half an hour of social studies. Come on, Allie, no more stalling. I don't answer. I mean it, she says. And I know she does. I watch a mind movie of her taking a stick and drawing a line in the dirt between us under the bright blue sky. She's dressed as a sheriff, and I'm wearing black and white prisoner stripes. My mind does this all the time. Shows me this movies that seem so real that they can carry me away from inside them. They are relief from my real life. So right there, Allie just had a movie in her mind. She's picturing something so lifelike that it's like a movie, that it can take her out of her real life. So I'm curious, I'm asking, if Allie feels like a prisoner in school and her teacher is the sheriff, what can we infer about Allie? I steal up inside, willing myself to do something I don't really want to do. To escape this teacher who's holding on and won't let go. I pick up my pencil and her body relaxes, probably, probably relieved that I've given in. But instead, knowing she loves clean desks and things just so, I grip my pencil with a hard fist and scribble all over my desk. Allie, she steps forward quick. Why would you do that? The circular scribbles are big on top and small on the bottom. It looks like a tornado. I wonder if I meant to draw a picture of my insides. I look back up at her. It was there when I sat down. The laughter starts. But they're not laughing because they think I'm funny. I can tell that you're upset, Allie, Mrs. Hall says. I'm not hiding that as well as I need to. She's such a freak. Shay says in one of those loud whispers that everyone is meant to hear. Oliver is drumming on his desk now. I fold my arms and stare up at her. That's it, Mrs. Hall finally says. To the office. Now. I wanted this. But now I'm having second thoughts. Allie? Huh? Everyone laughs again. She puts up her hand. Anyone else who makes a sound gives up their recess. The room is quiet. Allie, I said to the office. 
I can't go see our principal, Mr. Silver, again. I go to the office so much. I wonder when they'll hang up a banner that says, Welcome, Allie Nickerson. I'm sorry, I say, actually meaning it. I'll do it, I promise. She sighs. Okay, but if that pencil stops moving, you're going. She moves me to the reading table next to the Thanksgiving bulletin board with about being grateful. Meanwhile, she sprays my desk with cleaner, glancing at me like she'd like to spray me with cleaner. Scrub off the dumb. I squint a bit, hoping the lights will hurt my head less. And then I try to hold my pencil the way I'm supposed to, instead of the weird way my hand wants to. I write with one hand and shield my paper with the other. I know I'd better keep the pencil moving, so I write the word why over and over from the top of the page to the very bottom. One, because I know how to spell it right, and two, because I'm hoping someone will finally give me an answer. And that is the end of chapter one. Now on the next slide, you're going to see my journal entry about Allie. As we were reading, I was thinking about what thoughts and actions Allie was having that is giving us a little more information about her. So on the next slide, take a look at what I have jotted down. I want you guys to copy what I have written down about Allie into your reading journals.